Salem. <laughs> well guys, Salem and Kevin and I have not very good news to share. Yeah. Basically, a neighbor of ours, not in this neighborhood, but a couple neighborhoods over. Just a couple blocks away. Had their dog attacked by a group of coyotes. Or a pack, I guess. Now, normally in Arizona, if you live in the city, you are used to having like a stray coyote here or there. And usually they're just like a nuisance. So they'll get your cat or they'll possibly get like a chicken. small dog or yeah, or a chicken or something. And we actually have been really lucky. We haven't had problems for years until a couple years ago, as you guys know. And that's why we got this gal right here. She is a great protective dog. She barks anytime anything comes in the backyard. But she's also like our sweet, sweet family dog now that we love so much. Another reason why we went with the giant schnauzer is not just because they're good guard dogs in general, but also because they don't shed, which is a big thing that we need to have because Lydia's allergic to everything. So now we're all worried because the neighbors had a big dog and since there was a bunch of coyotes, it got hurt. And so we don't want our single dog to get attacked by a whole bunch of coyotes. So we've been doing all this training <laughs> and she's doing great, but now we're backing off a little bit, wondering if maybe letting her face one alone isn't the best option. So we thought today you guys would help us solve this problem. We're gonna go over all the different uh, coyote solutions and you guys are gonna tell us what to do, okay? Because we're a little bit stuck. So one of the first recommendations is to get an LGD, which is a livestock guardian dog. Salem is not a livestock guardian dog, she's just a general guard dog. Giant schnauzers have been bred to be guard dogs, so that's been a big pro of having her here. We've had a lot of friends that own, breed livestock guardian dogs and have all told us not to get one if we live on just an acre in the city because our neighbors are too close. And livestock guardian dogs are so great at guarding the property but they also bark all night long and we just can't have that happen our neighbors have been too kind to us over the years never complaining about the animals always been really supportive of what we're doing here uh, so we're not gonna make them more upset by yeah. having a dog bark all night neighbors That's... do not like guardian dogs here in the city so the next one is possibly a donkey but we can't have donkeys in our city. I know it's kind of a crazy rule. When it comes to an alpaca or a llama, we did consider that. We did. But they can't get into the different fencing areas. So they would only be able to be in the pasture and then they wouldn't be able to protect any baby goats or the bucks or anything. So that leaves us with barrier solutions. So you could do coyote rollers. Those are supposed to be kind of cool. It's just, we have a long fence around our whole property and coyotes are known to be able to escape the rollers. Like if there's a tree next to the fence, they can climb up the tree and then hop over the coyote rollers. Yeah, sheds and trees and the chicken coop. There's a whole bunch of places where smart nosed coyotes can like go around and do stuff. We've also thought of like a motion fence or an electric fence, but we have a lot of trees and bushes that sort of creep over the fence and then that also causes like I feel like they would get set off all the time so we are not sure what to do to completely solve the coyote problem I don't know if it's even possible to completely solve it we have talked to the fish and game department and while we're not allowed to hunt coyotes if they come on the property we are allowed to protect our property protect our livestock the only thing is that they're here to stay so even if let's say we trap one or shoot one it's still gonna be a problem we'll just have another one there's a whole the bunch because we have the railroad tracks and this huge 200 foot easement around the railroad tracks for miles and miles so there's miles where they can live right here in town so it's sort of a sort of a tricky position that we're in because we do live in the city and yet we live in an area that has a lot of canals and railroad tracks and alleyways for these coyotes to live so Salem is like our first step and she's a good solution so far but now we're a little bit worried about her potentially having to face a few coyotes a pack of coyotes so, so. <laughs> what are your ideas we could get another dog we could do that um it would just be another couple years of training which we just went through with salem uh so another dog would i guess 
bolster Salem up, give her a companion, you know, give her more fighting power. To take on a pack, yeah. And then there's always the coyote rollers that are a possibility, just not 100% sure. 100%. And it would be a lot of money, and to install it would be a huge thing. So we're putting this out there. You guys let us know if you know of any other solution to make sure that uh, our farm is protected and we can make sure and keep uh, keep all of our animals these safe. Ba these baby goats, they're gonna be cute. All right, let's see if the kids have any solutions for us. Go. Um, we can do geese, we can do an <laughs> emu. Birds. More turkeys. Birds. Pigeons, pigeons, would pigeons they, okay, pigeons. okay. Pigeons on the coyotes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we just need 10 more Salems. And A then... couple really angry chickens, maybe. <laughs> okay. Could do the job. Maybe. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> She's so good. Whoa, Lydia, look how wide Tilly is. <laughs> well, two to three, so we don't know. How to find the vein. It's usually right by the jaw. All done, Tilly. Okay, we're just four weeks away from kidding season, so that means we've gotta do some blood work to make sure that all the mamas are clear and free of any goat diseases. And then we also give them their CD&T vaccination. This way the babies are protected when they're born with a little bit of passive immunity. So we got five big mamas to bring into the milking station, and it's gonna be a bit of an adventure, but I've got a good assistant. Lydia is gonna help me because she loves needles. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and holding down animals. Yeah, that's <laughs> my two passions. All right, here comes Olive. She's easy to tell because she's not very fat. So I can feel... Okay, come on Hazel, you're next. Oh, I don't know Lydia, Hazel's not as wide at all. I know, I mean... She... But she definitely had two in there. Okay. They're so funny. They're always like, Arr. So you feel right by the jaw, where the point of the jaw is right there. And then you kind of come down, and it's gonna be around here. So then, you put pressure down here. Ooh, you're a hairy goat. She it is, is a hairy it goat. It is easier if you shave it. We just can go anywhere in this spot. I like to go kind of right in the middle here. Get it clean. Stick it straight in. They don't like it. And then that's it. She's kind of a longer doe. I think that's why she's not yeah. as, she can carry the weight a lot easier. Look at them over there. Hey, we need you guys. We have all the goats in this area because the boys are starting on the project in the milking station and the goats keep messing with it. So they're not very happy to be in here all together, but gotta, gotta get it done. Tatum's such a little skittish scaredy doe. Go on. I'm done. They never, they never really care about all these injections, do they? Okay. Daphne, you're up. She's pretty wide. <laughs> okay, she was the hardest one, but we got it done, we got it done. All right, there you go. Willow, are you so excited? You have a whole choice of stumps? Yeah. <laughs> She's you know, so we happy. Could, we could bring one that's like not rotted out like this one and put it over there and replace it. We could replace it, yeah, that might be a good idea. Come on, Willow. All the goats are in here right now as the boys are working on their project and Willow's happy as ever. It's a good distraction since we sort of destroyed her stump on accident. We're still gonna have to figure out a solution because she she needs a stump. That's her own. Are you gonna be a good girl? In other news, the vet just came by this morning for Luna, and so we've got some good solutions for her. We're gonna try, so we'll show that in the next video. We gotta get them all started, and hopefully, hopefully we see a bit of improvement with her.
Okay, it feels good to get that done. Um, the next couple weeks here, I'm gonna be getting all of the supplies ready and making a few last little finishing touches on the barn. And then we'll be, we'll be ready for a bunch of baby goats.